Dear friends, I'm back with another machine on the Van Hub, which is Pan OS One, which link will be added into the description section below so that you can download it. Before we go ahead, if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like below. You're greatly appreciated. So without further ado, let's just get started. After you download the machine or the image, and then we can import this machine into the VMware, as you can see over here. And this, yeah, the first note in the README file is very important, which is saying VMware asks whether you copied or moved this virtual machine or first boot, click, click, moved rather than copy. Otherwise, our target machine cannot get the IP address. So when you do this machine, this information is very, very important. So now we can go inside the VMware Kali Linux v VM. As you can see, I've already identified the IP address of the target as 133. Then we need to do the map scanning. As you can see over here, I use the options like since game, the version scan, the default script scan. And uh, then I use the option of dash p dash to do the comprehensive scheme. This option is very important for this machine. Otherwise, we cannot or a map cannot identify the higher number, portal number. And then use the option of on to output the result into this file. From the map scanning, we can tell that the target has one, two, three, four, five, five open ports. And the first one is 22, which is running SSH surface or secure shell surface. And it's corresponding version number. As we know, this version doesn't have some vulnerabilities, what we can exploit. The next one is 80 which is running HTTP surface, and also the version information, which is Apache 2. And then next two ports, port number are used by the Samba surface. And the last one is 10,000, which is running HTTP surface, also give us the version information, which is WebMean. And of course, this version is a bit outdated. So maybe there are or there is vulnerability for this version of WebMean surface. So what we are going to do next with this machine? If you have already followed my channel, I always say if the target has a surface running, which are related to the file sharing, like Samba surface, like FTP surface, like NFS surface. Such surfaces should become the first choice to emulate. This case would be Samba surface. So how to emulate Samba surface? We can use the tool of SMB client and with option of uppercase L and uh, then followed by the IP address of target and we can provide our own password. As you can see, there are several shares, and uh, these two, print and IPC, are very default one. We cannot get anything important from this or from such two shares. And this one, home. Of course, we need to check whether we can access this share without any authentication, because at this moment, we do not have credentials for Samba surface. So we can use the same utility SMB client followed by the IP address and the shell name. Press enter, provide our own password 
as can see connect failed access denied all right so next what we are going to do next we need to do immersion with web application both manually and automatically for this port number 80 default port number and also this port number let's emulate emulate to open port number manually first let's launch our browser and we can put the IP address of a target into the address bar press enter as you can see we got the home page from the target from server this is the help page if you like if you if you would like help click the next button below before we click next button I'd like to check the source code of this page, which is very simple. And now we can click next. As you can see, welcome to uh, this home page. And this is the official help page. If you are too big of to figure this out, enter your information below for some more hint. Maybe we can try to input like a test. And uh, I, I actually, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah, I maybe this is the username. Mm, I'm not sure. So next we can click a press. Please help. Haha, -ha, test for this one. You really suck. So we need to try again. So if you take a look at the URL in the address bar with more closely way, you can see from this pattern of the URL maybe the parameter there are two parameters the first one is a help and the second one is connect so maybe these two parameters have lfi or local file inclusion vulnerability or command injection vulnerability uh, for now we just copy this information or this url onto another book later we can check them or test them later or manually okay we can paste in here so next we can use some tools to do some automatic immigration for example the first one we need to check whether this target or this side has robots file not found which is fine which doesn't matter and then we can use the nigato to do the immigration you know nigato is useful for the web application immigration because it can give us the information, the rich information, for example, like version information, and also the header information, even can email out some common files or directories. So when we want to do the automatic immigration for the web application, the first two I'd like to use, as always, would be Nikto. Even sometimes, Nikto can identify exploits of the web application if it has. As you can see, we got the some. Yeah, this one, I think this one is wrong output. We can we can neglect this information. This one index one. Okay, index one, which is not important or interesting. Next, we can use the GoBust to do the directory immigration. I'd like to autocomplete this command. Yeah, we got more files or directories like index2. Okay, this page we have already walked through earlier. So I also get this directory PHP and we can use browser to access PHP my admin. However, we are prompted by the login panel. At this moment, we do not have the credentials. However, we can check to login with the weak credentials like admin as username and admin 
as a password as well. Let's sign in. Failed. All right. So I think this is a wrong direction after all. And now, I think GoBuster cannot discover more directories or files, except、uh, this information. So how to do next? I think we need to go back to the to the home page to test、uh, the LFI vulnerability. Yeah, this page. So first we can check whether we can. So I think you know how to test the LFI vulnerability. We can use normally we will use the password file, so we can access this file. Nothing returned. It means that、uh, the help parameter doesn't have LFI vulnerability. Next, we can check or test the second parameter connect. As you can see, we got the content or data of this file back. So this confirm our earlier guess or deduction. Maybe guess is more correct term. The target has LFI vulnerability, and we can get the user name information. So we can copy these lines onto another book. So far, we have already tested the target has LFI. Vulnerability. The next question, next question will come up in your mind: How to exploit this LFI vulnerability? I think for me, the firstly, I'd like to check whether we can access a private key for these users. So we can now we can access home and VMware SSH. Nothing returned, and we can check the second user name. Failed to retrieve the the data. Next, we can check the third user name. Also, we can use the command line to to do this. We can copy, and we can use Q, and、uh, yeah, to make sure you use the single quote or double quote quotes to include the URL, the entire URL. As you can see, nothing returned, no such file or directory. And the lastly, we can check this one. We can copy. And replaced by the last user name. Press Enter. We got the same result from the target. So how to do? Next, we can check whether we can access log file. No. Failed. And also, we can check whether we can get or retrieve the access log of Apache Two. Nothing returned. I mean, the 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 content of the target file. And also, you can check whether we can the target has RFI, the Remote File Inclusion Vulnerability, to save time. I will not do that. However, of course, I can tell you the result. The target doesn't have such a vulnerability at all. So, how to do next? Maybe we need to turn over to the next web application, which is running on the port number ten thousand, right? So, we can open up another tab.
as you can see, we are prompted again by the user login panel, and we can try to use the weak credential like admin as username and admin as password to log in. Field, also we can try to use the login bypass technique. Login, error, invalid, username. So how to do? You know, just, uh, yeah, I mentioned at the stage of the map scanning, this version of WebMe is a bit outdated. So it must have some vulnerability. And then we can use Google to make some research. Also, of course, I have already, to save time, I've already downloaded this, the exploit from the exploit database. Yeah, this one. This is the poll code. Maybe I have already opened up this one. I'm not sure whether it takes so long time to load the Google. Anyway, I've already got the exploit code. So how to use this code? We just use the poll and uh, we can try to access some files like uh, we can check whether we can retrieve the password file. Yeah, we can. Also, we can check whether we can access shadow. We can. So I think now we have really got the user name and also the encrypted password information. Maybe next we can try to use John Reaper to crack. And so how to crack a password, how to do. First of all, we can password. We can copy. and paste in here. Then we can generate the shadow file and we can copy this part of output. And then we can use the John Reaper However, first of all, we can we can merge these two files to the to the file which is more usable and more convenient for the John Reaper to crack. So how to do? We can use on shadow shadow password shadow and we can save the result into hashes and then we can cut out this Okay, so now what we can do next, we need to use the John Reaper and uh, just press enter to crack the password. Of course, it will take a bit long time, about 10 minutes, which depends on the available resources. I mean the CPU and the memory of your attacking machine. I will not wait for the for this John Reaper to finish to save the time of the video. I can tell you the decrypted password should be this one. Okay, so now and the user name is this one. And we yeah, I failed to retrieve the password for other users like loot user, like Obama, like Osama and Yama. All right. All right. So I'd like to quit from the John Reaper. Next, we can SSH to connect to the target. However, it prints us the error. Unable to negotiate with the target. No matching host key types because just mentioned at the very beginning, this mission is a bit old. So very often you will see such a similar 
issues with SSH. So how to sort out? We can use this option. Yeah, of course you can use Google to make a summary research. We just copy this option and uh, to solve the issue. What you can see just now. All right. And the password H4CKM3. As you can see, we are successfully logged in as user VMware. And we can, yeah, we do not need to retrieve the user flag. And we can do some local immigration. Nothing important. And we can run the sudo to see whether this user can. run sudo however this user or kind of user may not run sudo on this machine so how to do next we need to do the automatic immigration because manual immigration take a long time and you maybe sometimes we will miss uh, some important points or vectors so i think the the good the practice for the immigration is to combine the menu immigration and automatic immigration. So how to do the automatic immigration? We can use the NIMPIER shell script and we can navigate to temp directory. I've already got this shell script ready. So next we need to upload this script to the target and how to yeah how to upload. There are several ways, but for me, the most convenient and the most efficient way is to set up the web server locally on, on the attacking machine. So how to do, we just use pin 3 and auto complete this command. As you can see, the web server is set up locally without any issue. Of course, you can use, you also can configure the port number rather than default one, 8000. For me, I just used the default one, which is fine. Now we go back to the shells of the target, and then we can use wget to upload. And followed by the IP address of the Kali Linux port number. Please don't forget the port number if you do not use the default port number. And the name pairs. Then, in order to run this script, we need to make it executable. And then we can run this script. The NinPier shell script also is a counterpart on the Windows. The WinPier shell script is very, very useful for the privilege escalation because it can help us to extract and discover many many different types of information for example like kernel information for example like process information the chrome job information suid binary information and so on and so forth as you can see it's done now we can scroll back or scroll up to see whether this script can help us to identify or discover such a vector we got the password. This is the password. I think it's not. And now we go up. Capabilities information. Sometimes we can use utilize the the capabilities of a specific binary to up, upgrade or escalate our privilege. As your ID. Nothing there in this case. Chrome job information. And also the kernel. Of course, this is a bit old, right? So 
I think besides this kernel information a bit outdated kernel, the NinPeer shell script cannot discover more usable information or vector for us. So how to do next? We need to use the search sprite utility. Search sprite utility. And we can get, of course, we have already got the kernel information and also the release information, right? Here, we can use the ulim to get this information again. So this is the Ubuntu, right? So we can Ubuntu and the version. So we can use Ubuntu and as you can see, what we got is several kernel level exploits. We can try one by one. The first one, for example, we can copy the relative path of this exploit. And we can use the same command with option of M to copy the exploit code. This is the C code. Next, we need to upload this code to the target. And we can use wget is done. And then we need to compile this exploit with GCC. Of course, we need to check whether GCC is available on the target. It's there. Then we can use GCC with option of O to output exploit. It's done. And then warning. We do not need, we do not need to, to care about this warning. This is not error. And we can make it executable. And then we can run this exploit. As you can see from the banner, we can tell that we have already become the root user. Then we can navigate to root directory. Yeah, we do not need to get the root flag. So that's pretty much it. I'd like to see you in the next one. Bye. Have a nice day.